set this. That would be nice. So today I am going to make mozzarella. I've been making it often and it's really fun and it's really easy. And I was like, I should make a video about it. I'm just going live right now because no one else is home. So it feels like a good time to do that. I'm try to set up a little stand while I wait for people to maybe come watch me. Uh, we've been making so we have three cows at the farmer stand here, and we've been making a lot of ghee with the butter, which is a cool way to preserve it. Um, and we still have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of milk, extra milk. We've been going two gallons a day, so I get an extra gallon that I get to do what I want with, and I'm going to make cheese. Cool, so I'm gonna get my gallon of milk and I did a little bit for the bus today. I sat down and I figured out solar, which I figured out a while ago, but then I I hit like a couple questions I get confused about and then I just stress about it for the next three weeks and then hi Olivia. Uh and then I decide to go back to it and I find the answer in like five seconds and I'm like, okay, why was I so stressed? Um, but, so I made progress with solar. I'm gonna order some more things. I figured out like wiring for the outlets and everything like that um, and where we're gonna put outlets. So I'm excited about that. But I just don't feel like building at all. So I'm gonna do this. So I have a gallon of raw cow's milk and I'm going to get animal rennet and citric acid and get those ready. Those are the three things you need to make mozzarella. That's it, which is pretty cool. Citric acid. animal rennet. acid and rennet. So you mix the other two things with water. figured out how to make whey yet. I mean, no. Okay, I know obviously whey is like the byproduct. I haven't figured out how to make ricotta from the whey. And I've been trying every single time. I watch a new video, I do exactly what that person does, and for some reason it never works for me, which is frustrating. But yeah, so mostly it's very like temperature specific, which is strange. The ingredients themselves are pretty easy, but the temperature is everything. Uh. 
but I've messed up a couple times and like not done enough of stuff and then just added more later and it's been fine. So first I want to get it to 55 degrees. It's at 39 right now. So I'll mix these with the white powder. What's cool about the rennet too is it's like it comes from the inside of um it's like of the lining of a calf's stomach and how they figured that out is like so before they had like bags and glass jars and stuff and they had they were milking cows and they wanted a place to put the milk they would put the milk in the stomach of a dead cow because that was just like the a container that they had because they didn't have any other kinds of containers so they're like oh we'll put it in this dead animal uh and the lining of the stomach turned the milk into cheese so that's how they figured out that that's how you make cheese or that you can make cheese from milk so now we have bottled animal rennet that we add in exact quantities to make it but kind of cool oh see yeah look i just did something kind of weird i added the citric acid before it was, and i put it directly in i knew i was gonna fuck up if i went live and did this i'm not distracted but it might still work most things still work like we'll see now i'll learn if that step actually matters or not because there's a lot of steps that i've done that I do a little bit wrong and it still turns into cheese. So a lot of the steps don't matter. I've just seen a YouTube video where someone heated it up to 55 degrees. And so that's what I'm doing. 44 it is right now. So we'll see. Hopefully you don't need it to be 55 when you add the citric acid. Show you guys. I learned from... Uh, this girl on YouTube, Ballerina Farm. Anybody ever watched her before? Um, it was funny because I was watching it and I was like, wow, this is like a very beautiful homesteader couple. And it looks like they have like this like professional film crew filming them. Uh, but it's like a normal video. Like she's like, oh, I got dishes in the sink. She's making mozzarella. Like, you know, she's got like 10 kids and whatever um and then later i saw somewhere else on the internet that there's like all this controversy about her because i guess her husband is the ceo of jet blue oh no her husband's father is the ceo of jet blue so people are like you're pretending to be a homesteader poor person <laughs> like you have all this money you must be fun when you got that backup whatever uh which is funny but I think it's kind of a lame criticism because I'm like, if she has all that money and she still chooses to homestead, like they're actually milking the cow. She actually has made mozzarella a lot of times. Then like, good for her, whatever, you know, like she's choosing that lifestyle. She could be like never working a day in her life, but she's like choosing that because it's more rewarding. So uh, I think that's what's up. So I support Ballerina Farm and her glamorous homestead. I used to work in a farmhouse cheese maker. It was very relaxing. Rubbing the cheese with salty water, turning, listening to the radio, seeing you do this brought back memories. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, it is nice. I, I like the um the process of like stretching it and stuff. It feels like a nice labor of love. And I love cheese, so it just feels exciting to be like making it yourself. And it's really like made me feel like cows are like the way to go with like homesteading and uh, living off grid and stuff. Cause it's like, 
I don't know, like growing the energy with growing vegetables, which maybe I just need to get better at it and do it in less energy intensive ways and stuff. Um, but then just like harvesting and preserving, like the, the constant stream of milk that you get. And it's the same with like eggs with chickens. It's like you're getting them in the exact rate that you want to eat them. Whereas like with most vegetables, it's like you get a bunch at once and then you have to try to make it last for the year or something, which is like easy with some vegetables, but with others, it's like a little tough. Um, so I think I could live off like the easy, like the laziest homestead lifestyle. If you just did like eggs, like chickens, a couple cows, and then you grew like squash and sweet potatoes, that's like, you're chilling, you know? If you could like manage on those. My friend who we're living with here drinks like essentially only milk and that's how he makes it work that he just has his cows and he's just like changed his diet to just be like a raw milk person and it works, you know? Cool, so it's 58. But now that I already added the citric acid, I don't know if we'll just keep it rocking. Rich people really get picked on. They're probably not happy with their situation. Yeah, yeah, I, that's why I was like, well, what is she supposed to do? Like, if people are mad that a rich person is homesteading, then like, what, should she go live in LA and live like the other rich people? Cause you're gonna be mad about that too. So like, what, what's she supposed to do as a rich person? Uh, yeah, yeah, preserving is a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work milking the cows too. Um, it's like consistent work. You can't just stop. You have to be on it, but, um, any animal care, I guess, is like, you can't just leave for like a week, you know, um, is the difference. And that is definitely not a position that we're in right now, but I'm really happy that we have people that we can stay with when we're stirring the milk. You're not supposed to stir it too much, or you can disturb the curds. I will prepare, I think it's a half teaspoon of rennet. Chores are relentless. Chopping wood, everything like that. So in case anyone's actually learning, this is animal rennet and that's what I'm adding. Being rich takes the pressure off. Yeah, exactly. That's, I guess, the, the difference is like a lot of people are wondering if they could homestead and then they're imagining that they would be relying on that lifestyle if they stopped working. So they would be like wanting to make sure that they can really live it without worrying that they wouldn't be able to meet their needs. Whereas a rich person can just do it for fun and have that fall back. And so I guess that's maybe the criticism is people are feeling like um, they want to see somebody who's making it work, you know, like that's what they want to see on YouTube. And, and that makes sense to me. Um, like doing something that they also could reasonably do. It is going pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm, what did I do? We cut, I cut some wood yesterday. I'm just waiting for Tree to sand it. He's off on a job. Um, so I just didn't feel like doing anything with the bus today. So I'm usually I make the cheese at night, but I just felt like I'll just make it during the day and I'll go live. Cause also cause no one's home. So I don't usually like to go live in the house when people are home, but nobody's home. So I was like, we're good here. It's the attachment to it that brings problems. Yeah, I think that is a good point. That's why I'm spending all of my money on this bus. I'm not too attached to it. We're also thinking about buying a car soon, which then we'd really be spending all our money. But I can't think of what else we really need to have a baby other than a house and a car. Those are like, you know, fundamentals. So it's like, I gotta have a car. It's been hard here not having our own car. We've been really reliant on, a lot of the bus build has been slowed by like, I can't get to Lowe's, nobody can drive me. So that's another reason I'm feeling like a car is a good idea. And where we are, there's really awesome non-rusty cars. Um, so I'm looking at, we need a manual thing so I can, we can flat tow it behind the bus. So I'm looking at like Mini Coopers and Volkswagens, which 
maybe are worse, I've heard. And uh, maybe a, like a Wrangler, there's a lot of manual Jeep Wranglers around here, but that's a little heavier to tow. Um, but I, it seems like they last a really long time. So that's cool. It's a different story when you're relying on something 365 days a year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I love cheese. I'm heating up this milk right now to 80 degrees. Let's see. The first video I saw, VWs are reliable. I've heard the opposite, so that makes it weird. Most of the ones that are in our budget already have like 100,000 miles, so I don't know if that is also considered reliable at that point. Um, I was trying to spend like, if I could spend like $3,000 on a car, that would be awesome. I might have to spend like $5,000. My daughter is a cheese bean. Yeah, I pretty much have eaten all the mozzarella I've made myself. Um, I actually have some made right now. I could show you. So the other challenge I've been having is preserving it. Do you guys, how would you preserve mozzarella if you were to make mozzarella? I'm curious. Um, BWs are very problematic. Yeah, that's mostly what I've heard. Um, but yeah, okay. So I want to preserve the mozzarella in oil. That is my dream. I want to have a racks and racks of mozzarella balls in oil in our bus that I can just grab and open up and add to like a salad, whatever I want. Um, oil in a jar, okay, that's what you said. What's weird, so then do I need to refrigerate that or no? Because I have been just in case, also because I'm pregnant, so I have to be careful with that kind of stuff, you know? Um, but a lot of times, I don't know if I'm just, I'm gonna try this time. I watched another video of people like really stretching the mozzarella. I'm gonna try to do that and see if I can get it to not do this because the texture seems to vary based on how much I've been stretching it but I have this little jar with some little mozzarella balls in there um but it seems like the longer they sit in oil the less like chewy they get and the more they get like kind of I don't know how to describe it like like eating wax um I guess, I don't know, I can tell by looking at it. Oh, it's still pretty good. Oh, I lost half of it. That's actually good. But, okay, so this is what I stretched more, and I think it held up better. It seems like when I don't stretch it enough, it absorbs the oil, and it gets kind of clear, and it, make, it gets weird. Um, that one was good actually really good <laughs> when everybody gets home I'm like, try this because i've been having them try little bits i don't think anyone is like so into the mozzarella that they're gonna like snack on it tree was vegan for five years so cheese is like new to him in general so he's not like a cheese fiend um i see vacuum packed in their own juice at the supermarket yeah but i've heard that that is a lot of preservatives um and that's why that works. This one looks like it might be a little weirder. It kind of got like a little. Can't you tell? Like it's not white. It's like yellow. Like it absorbed the oil in a weird way. Yeah, that one. It's salty. It's good. But it's like, oh shit. I got to check the temperature. Ah! Ugh. The first person I watched actually let it get to 105, but when I did 88 degrees, it worked a lot better. Um, and that's just for the temperature that you have it at when you add the rennet. So I'm gonna do that now and check the temperature again. Maybe I can get it a little cool down kind of fast. Swirl it around. 
least it's not in the cast iron. The cast iron takes it out. So. Ooh, well, I can see that the citric acid has mixed in a bit. It started to, now it's at 100 degrees. All right, I'm gonna wait for it to come over. So, if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell. There's a little bit of curds in there now, just from the citric acid, which is kind of cool. Mitsubishi Lancer, okay. Yeah, I want, I've heard that there's ways to save the cheese that it has like a six month shelf life. That's really what I would like. Um, it's not just like preserve it for the week, but like preserve it where like I leave here and I still have cheese. That would be cool. Yeah, so the thing is I need a manual car so that I can flat tow it behind the bus. Um, and so it's like what is available in manual in abundance and that's kind of how I ended up on them. But I have heard to Toyota is like one that I was like, I want a Toyota because I people are like, my Toyota has been going forever. So I wanted a Toyota, but um, it seems like I can't find them. Like I, I try to search manual on Facebook Marketplace and it doesn't just show me all the manual cars. Um, so I've had to find like brands that often come in manual and then search for those so that I can search for manual cars. That makes sense. show you guys the bus wait just give it like five minutes otherwise i'm gonna rush it because i'll get impatient lancer our manual a lot of time okay cool i'll look into that here's the cows Beautiful. Oh, it's getting really nice out. I can work now. So bad. There's a little baby that was born recently. There's Dolly. There's Hara, she's a Jersey cow. And here's where they get milked. They have a really nice space. They got a little pond over there. I know, it's so nice. <laughs> it's like not bad at all down here. And it even gets warmer in the bus. I've also discovered just how I'm so excited about how nice it feels in the bus with all the natural light. Um, like it's like I'm preferring hanging out in here versus hanging out in the house, which feels good. But I'm like, yay, our house has so much natural light. Okay. Sadie! Standing in the road. Can I see Sadie? Sadie, come in! Come on! She likes the bus. Yeah, but uh, baby is going to be born in July. Yeah, she was saying that was a perfect spot. There's like a little rack here. So this is where the bus is at. Looks pretty cool right now. Go away. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to make the text go away so I can see. Well, whatever. Um, so we brought in these cushions just so we could chill. They're from our friend's bus, which is like our friend's old bus that's broken down here. She got it professionally built out and he built the, this whole, I mean, he built one that I replicated and put here. And so I borrowed her cushions just so we could like chill in there. That's where we at with that the other day. Oh, thank you for asking me all these questions and <laughs> making my life better. I appreciate it, Head Fuka. Um, 
It's always nice. It's nice when someone's asking me questions, so I'm not like wondering what to talk about. So thanks. This is our fridge, which I gotta prop up. I'm gonna. We are back inside. Ninety-four. I think that's close enough. So I'm gonna add the rennet. So I have the half a teaspoon of animal rennet and like half a cup of water. And I'm gonna pour it in. And then I say to gently stir in an up and down motion. Because you don't want to disturb the curds. you want to make sure that it fully mixes otherwise you could end up with like chunks and parts of it that don't really solidify and that's that now we wait for 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna cover it. And then we get to the stretching part. Can't wait to see how that turns out. I know, me too. The next part's really fun too. In 10 minutes from now, we'll be like stretching it. I just watched a whole video in, uh, of how they do it in Italy, where they have like a giant pot of mozzarella and they have like the big spoon and they're stretching it up like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, we don't have that much mozzarella, but I'm gonna just try to do it like that because I have been burning my hands trying to like get it out and stretch it like this. And I wanna see if I can like, I'm not gonna like ball it up like I've been doing. I'm just gonna try to stretch it with the um, spoon and then afterwards ball it up. Uh, and I think it will be easier because I won't burn myself so much. So that's the plan. So while we wait for that cheese to solidify, does anybody have any questions about the bus? Anything like that? I am five and a half months pregnant now, which is crazy. It feels like it's taking forever, but also feels like it's gonna happen again. I'm gonna be eating a lot of yogurt. And so next I'm gonna try to make yogurt out of the cow's milk, which would be fun. I don't know why I haven't done it yet. It's just a whole nother project and I've been liking making the cheese, but I will get there. Mm. 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 Maybe that'll be another video. I'll make yogurt, but that's like a, you leave it for six hours or so. Yeah, yeah. See, that one didn't turn out. Now, I don't know if I just didn't stretch it enough or get it to a hot enough temperature. I wish anyone was into cheese as much as I was here so that other people could try it. <laughs> it's like it's just me. Mm. That one's good. It's from the same batch. I think it's just about how much I worked at. So I'm gonna do overkill this time to try it. Make sure that. 
I do it sufficiently. Raising a new human is so much fun, the best job I ever had. That's awesome. I'm really excited for that part of it. It feels like surreal and hard to really comprehend. The same way that being pregnant, I think, was hard for me to actually comprehend um, until it's actually happening, you know? Like, I romanticized it a lot, and I knew I wanted to be pregnant, but now, like, the reality of, like, oh, my life will never be the same is, like, really setting in more um, in a way that you just don't, you can't fully imagine it what's happening. I'm excited. Let's see how she's doing. Okay. It's there. I think I see a little bit of solidness, but I don't want to fuck with it. Maybe I'll just tap the top so we can test. It's been like two minutes, so it's not really supposed to have formed yet. But let's see. Oh, yep. So you can see. Can you guys see that? How it's already kind of, it's not ready to like do anything with yet, but it already starts to harden. It's kind of like jello. some honey on my yogurt and then I'm gonna go outside hopefully keep service. I actually didn't know what fear was till I had a child. First time I cried tears of joy. Yeah. I won't know until I know, I guess. But I can imagine. It's a whole different vibe. Tree's laying tile today. Kind of funny. He's been helping our friend do that. And we're waiting to find out if it's a boy or a girl. I am going to the doctor, I think, hopefully soon. I went once in New York, and then I had to get all my stuff transferred down to Kentucky. And that's been taking a while. So I haven't had an appointment in a while, but everything feels fine. I can feel it kicking a lot. Let's see. My mom thinks I'm lying about my bum. I don't know if you would consider this a bodily bump or not. I feel the presence of it. I feel the firmness in that part of me, and I can tell that this is not. And my belly button totally changed. So I was like, something's happening. But she's like, I don't think you are showing. Do, do, do. <laughs> First day of parenthood. Cried tears of joy. Three days later, watching TV, I had a panic attack that I was all in. Yeah, I could see that. The infancy stage is scary. Like, I feel like I've been around toddlers so much that I'm like, I don't, I'm ready. But, like, the baby baby, like, having that be entirely your responsibility is, like, next level. But... It'll be nice. It'll be the summer. 
find like a nice shady spot, park the bus, have like blankets outside under trees and stuff because it's gonna be so hot in the bus, but we'll just spend a lot of time outside. Uh, that's why I want like a little like bassinet kind of thing that we can move outside so we can like always like put it in a cool spot. Um. I'd love tips on that, though. Raising an infant in a school bus. I've been reading, um, what's it call it? Spiritual midwifery. It's about, like, there's, like, that intentional community called The Farm in Tennessee that started in 60s or 70s, and it was, like, a uh, caravan of school buses, like, 80 school buses, like hundreds of hippies traveling around the U.S. and then they got 200 acres in Tennessee and started the farm. Which is now like a whole giant community of people. Um, but it's all about the babies that were born while they were in the bus caravan. And like they're all just like being each other's midwives and helping each other give birth and um they're all on school buses, so it's kind of cool. And I like it. It's just like stories about birth. So you just read them and you kind of like understand what can happen just through all these stories without somebody like sitting down and telling you. But I've read a lot of birth books now, and now I'm kind of curious about infant care books. I think that's like the next level. There's one called like Safe Infant Sleep that seemed interesting. That was about like, because I know a lot of my friends do like co-sleeping where they sleep with their kids. Um, and there's just like things you have to be aware of and prepare yourself to be able to do that. I don't know if we'll be able to do that because... Uh, she's a really heavy sleeper and I don't know I'm just like I don't know if like I feel like our I don't know it seems scary that something could happen but I don't know yet we'll definitely have a crib and all that and a breathable mattress so we can be ready for whatever feels right Okay. Now let's watch me eat my yogurt. We can check on the cheese. I think. Yep. Boom. Wow. It's a good one. Okay, I'm gonna try something different this time. I have been cutting it at this point and then making balls. I'm going to not do that. And I'm just going to now heat it up to the really hot temperature where it starts to melt. And I'm going to stretch it. Because it seems very solid. I'm very, I like how it is. And I want to keep it as one piece. And then I can do that stretchy thing like in the Italian video. So let's try that. Which then, maybe I didn't even need to cool it. I don't know. It's fun to experiment because then you learn, like, you know, people show you one way to do it, but I'm sure there's something. But, all right. We're at the fun part. So I'm going to get this brocking. I'm going to add salt because this mozzarella does not taste very good without salt. So I bought a bunch. There are little sponges. They're little sponges for knowledge. They learn immediately. My boy could speak two syllable words at six months old. He was riding BMX at 20 months old, riding dirt bikes at three years old. Aww. Thanks for sharing all this 
stories about your baby with me. It feels really exciting. I'm so excited for them to be like a kid. But I know I could pick some up now just to show you guys. Let me wash my hand. is what we're looking like. So I can like roll it if I wanted to. Just kind of like squeeze out the water and get it to like form more. Oh, maybe I should have let it sit longer. Seems very formed. Wow, it seems like I made a lot too. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm rotating the whole circle now. Worst comes to worst, I'll make ricotta, which I've been trying to make anyways. I can't figure it out, so. I don't know if that actually counts as ricotta, if I just break up this, but we'll see. We'll see if you actually have to wait the full time. Everyone seems really, like, flexible about the time. When I look up, like, how to, uh, like, how to make the mozzarella, it's like, it seems like people will wait, like, 10 to 20 minutes on this so I feel like it's not a huge deal that if I wait a little bit less I ate a whole yogurt like the tripod so you can really watch the way it's moving right now. So usually at this point I would be balling it up and then I would be heating it and stretching. Maybe one day you can make a video about raising kids in an alternative way like resources to w reduce waste, diapers, clothes. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool, like hitting all those points, like the co-sleeping and the reusable diapers and everything like that. Okay, it's already heating up so hot. Yeah, they never talk about the heating temperature. I feel like it's already too hot to touch. Does that mean it's stretchy? No, it doesn't. It just means that it's not forming together. Uh-oh. I don't know what I did here. Maybe I was supposed to wait. I mean, I'm getting left it for long enough to let it like um sit cool that's i that's nice to hear that you would like that definitely uh, makes me think 
because I would like that too. Like realistic options and stuff like that, you know. Tastes good. Mmm, it tastes so stringy and nice. I don't know. What if I just heated it now? Can I form it now? Okay, I'm gonna try and pick some up with a strainer and see if I can like form it into a ball. I kind of thought that it would just like create a form itself. So here, the cheese. I like it. I like what it's doing. It's melting. But I have it really hot. Usually it kind of like gets hard and then I and then you heat it up again to melt it and then you stretch it. Which I could I should have just stuck to the regular way when I started making a tutorial video about it. But... Okay, yeah, it's working. I can always ball it up. And it's actually feels like pretty stretchy off the jump. I already heated it up to the temperature. Yeah. Oh, they're back. I gotta go. Bye.